Straw Hut Media. I feel like I always have to get something off my chest. This is like therapy for me. I canceled my therapist literally this week, so I have a lot of I extra canceled stuff. my therapist this week too. It was a good one. It was a good one. It was a great one, actually. Yes, this is Confess Your Mess, and we're talking about today's episode. Um, the theme, I'm not gonna say it, but let's just say, oh, I wanna dance with somebody. Do we have the right to that song? Are we allowed to sing that? I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like I you can sing like three, yeah. three seconds. But also there was um, another thing um, that wasn't the theme that kind of ended up being the, the recurring yeah. thing throughout. I'm learning as we do more and more of these episodes, mm-hmm. we always come back to a couple topics. One of them is sex. The yeah. other one um, you're going to hear a lot about in this pod. Yeah. Uh, so it's more popular than we thought. Uh, and it gets graphic and detailed, po- probably and possibly because of me. Uh-huh. Um, also, before we do get into the pod, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to our listeners. Yes. Like, we're getting reviews. We're getting ratings. Our we messengers. We appreciate you. The messengers are so good. You guys are incredible. You ride or die, and we love you for it. Friendly reminder, if you haven't had a chance yet and you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, uh, a review uh, and five stars would mean the world to us. Amazing. It's how we make this thing keep going. Yes. Uh, we're starting to get our initial numbers in from the first few months, and they're really fantastic. Mm-hmm. And that's all because of you all. So we just want to say thank you. And tell also, your friends, yeah, because this is the friends. perfect show to binge. This really is. And then to like gossip about the next mm-hmm. day. Um, and then also uh, head over to confessyourmess.us if you have a secret or a confession you'd like to reveal. Please, please, please somebody leave us a damn voice note <laughs> we want to play somebody's voice on our podcast and we you... can scramble it make it anonymous like sure. if you're worried about your voice being recognizable we have talented editors and our producer frank they will make sure that your voice is not recognizable so please mm-hmm. for the love of god submit a voice note with the juicy secret Ooh, like when people used to go on like the jerry springer show yes. back in the day and they would like gray them out and their voice mm-hmm. would be like this we could do that to you yeah or not whatever anyway great episode get into it now AJ, will you please introduce our amazing guest for yeah, today? So we actually worked together a gajillion years ago around the same time you and I met each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, we hosted a little after show for So You Think You Can Dance a hundred years ago. They're an incredible dancer and they have blossomed into the most incredible, incredible human being in the years since. It's been a while, so we're going to be catching up today because mm-hmm. we have not seen each other in so long. They're about to move to Europe. Uh, they're one of the hottest, hottest burlesque dancers on the planet. Uh, I... I first started taking notice of this new evolution in dance uh, with the Glitter Unicorn. Mm -hmm. Remember Glitter Unicorn, Mm -hmm. Glitter Fantasy? Uh, We used to watch all the time. You might know our guest from Cosmopolitan or maybe uh, Pop Sugar. Please welcome to the program, Jake Dupree. Whoop, whoop. Come on. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. We're excited to have it. So here's the thing. I, I think Jake and I also met at After Buzz, uh-huh. but then we would run into each other over the years. But I've seen Jake more recently because when I was at Clever, mm. we did and I, I, I hope, dear God, please do not look for the video online. But we did a video Go look right now with my best friend, Drew, and Jake was our teacher teaching us how to do burlesque. It was a struggle for me. Mm. I was very stiff. Um, we'll have to do a round two one day, maybe not on camera, just where you try to teach me. So (laughs) I know you were actually, actually, you were pretty amazing at it. I mean, your body in general, I was like, you could literally put a thong on that and see it move and it would be great. So you could literally do nothing and it would be amazing. Well, I appreciate that. And I agree because I look at the booty all day, every day. You do have a really, really sexy physique. Thank you. You and Jake are built similarly. You're taller and a little bit bulkier. But Jake, yeah. Jake, Jake, the body, Jake. honey, was oh, it always there? Did I not just know this a decade right. ago? Right. No, I mean, well, to be fair, I mean, when you met me, I was like 20, what, like 24, 25, like young, like child, you know, and I'm 33 now. So it's different. I mean, you know, it's just like your body goes through different phases and different things. So it's like, I feel like now, I don't know, it's just different because p- my body is just in a different place now. So yeah, my body has not progressed in the same way in that same time period. So congrats to you. Uh, (laughs) We're super excited to have you here today. In order to trust you with our messengers, uh, we got to kick things off really quickly with a little thing we like to call uh, mess, but yes. Yes. And uh, this is something (laughs) in your life that uh, might be a mess, but you just can't say no to it. Keep it. You let it stick around. What is your mess? But yes. Ooh, my mess, but yes, is definitely watching any and all 
Housewives episodes. Yes. Okay, so Jake, because if you don't know, Jake is super into uh, burlesque and dancing, but also fitness. Before this, I know you used to do a lot of uh, training. So Jake, we decided for this episode, the theme of the secrets, because every single episode we do a theme, the theme of the secret is going to be exercise and dance secrets. Very mm. specific mm. <laughs> secrets, mm-hmm. by the way. <laughs> I actually have a confession um, that AJ knows and maybe some close friends, but I've never said it publicly. So I'll confess that later on the show. So this one comes from anonymous female California. So this could be one of our neighbors, our friends. <laughs> on my dr- <laughs> there are millions of people in California. <laughs> what California isn't one of the largest states in the United States? We have three neighbors. What? Okay, <laughs> and like four friends. <laughs> well, that is true. On my drive to dance class, I really had to number two. Ooh. And I was not going to make it to the studio. <laughs> I pulled over and pooped in someone's side yard. No toilet paper on hand. Waddled back my waddled back to my car, butt clenched and wiped when I got to the studio. I know I am in all caps ratchet. I wouldn't consider that ratchet. I would just consider that uh, thoughtful and also resourceful. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay. I mean, there's times. we've all been there in traffic. If you're in California, you know traffic. There's been times where I've literally about burst and I had to like pee in a water bottle. So it's like mm-hmm. things like that happen. And you know, if you if you got to go number two, sometimes you just can't stop it. <laughs> Can I ask you a totally weird question? Because this is something that I would think about. If I were to ever dance uh, in the costumes, the burlesque that you that you dance in, mm. and mm. all of a sudden a moment happens. You're doing a lot of you're doing a lot of splits. You're doing a lot of high kicks. You're doing a lot of <laughs> twists, and maybe the tummy just rumbles wrong at one moment. Has that ever happened to you? Is that something that you fear? Is there a way to sort of help prevent that? Because I'd be terrified. So I try not to eat too much before my performance. At least uh, do my constitutional before I go. You know what I mean? Like I try to do that. So that I, <laughs> I, I so there's no mess. There's no uh, bloat. There's no nothing. It's all nice, right, and tight. So there it is. <laughs> there, I love it. Listen, no, no bloat. We'll put on the Instagram um, at Confess Your Mess Podcast uh, one or two of Jake's videos when we promote Ugh. this episode. Just because if you like, I'm not even kidding. Jake is one of the most talented burlesque dancers mm-hmm. and some of the costumes that Jake wears. Oh, my God. Like, there's one where you have like, um, I don't even know if you can. Is it a thong? Because it's just uh, uh, something in your butt crack, but there's no <laughs> straps on your butt. It's, it's just something in your butt a, crack. It's called a merkin. A merkin. Mm-hmm. Oh, and oh it, it's at the it, top, it's, right? Kind of a, like a like a like sorry, a. It literally covers the front and then goes up between the cheeks. Taint covers the taint and then comes up between the crack. And it's um, there's two pay tape on the front and then I put like um, wig glue on the back so it sticks oh on. Oh my gosh! And there so are definitely good. been times where it's fallen off. <laughs> there have. Oh yeah, I mean, I try to keep like a hat or a piece of the costume close just in case it does come off so I can like put it over it and like pretend like it was a part of the thing. But there's only been one time where I had like legit just hold it. So Ooh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so they, they got a show that night. When we first met you and I were just still like little babies in Hollywood. Like we children were doing little podcasts together and talking about dancers and and <laughs> and it was like this weird little family that we had for a while and it was wonderful. And I just yep. remember thinking oh this is so fun. And then like to not see you do what you do for a while and then to see your story start to like take shape and the glitter fantasy unicorn was like those videos were so freaking hilarious. I used to watch them and laugh so hard. and I was like, oh, my God, Jake (laughs) is going somewhere. Jake is doing it. And it wasn't the route or the avenue I expected for you, uh, but it was so much better than I expected. And then I see you doing burlesque and then you come out as non-binary and you're starting to share like more and more and more of yourself literally and figuratively with the world and you know (laughs) i'm a little bit older than you a few years i'm in my 40s now Mm -hmm. uh barely and it's 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 so i don't know it's encouraging to me to see because i didn't i mean growing up like like we talked about this off camera non-binary wasn't like a phrase there wasn't a term for that when we were growing up when i was growing up and it was like you're gay you're straight you're male you're female and that's that and there was no discussion about anything else even the idea of like bisexuality when I was younger was sort of like taboo. Like, oh, that's not really a thing. Well, like, it's that's also like, what... I, I think the idea of that was always like, oh, that's just the road to gay town, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, right. Exactly. Oh, they just haven't admitted it to themselves right. yet. That was sort of like the dialogue and the narrative. Yep. And 
not only was I just proud of you and inspired by you just being so real and so unabashedly you, also Loki, I was like, not in a kink or a fetish way, but I was like, oh, this is sexy. Do you come across that a lot, especially with men who are who are maybe identify as male or 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 gay or bi or even straight, and they're like, hmm, yeah. there's something about you that I'm really fascinated by. I think the most interesting thing about doing this, I mean, obviously it was all completely like a selfish thing, like just trying to basically like survive. And I often like try to approach life. Like I get to do this once and it could literally be over tomorrow. Like Mm -hmm. I could walk into the street and someone could run over, you know, stuff like that. I think about that a lot. And I'm just like, how can I maximize my time while I'm here and really just try to be the best version of me? You know, I know people that's so cliche, but it's true. Um, but for me, it was like a lot of the, a lot of the things that I've come across doing this, it's like these typically like quote unquote straight people, mainly men coming up to me afterwards and being like, I have never been attracted to a guy before, but I'm, I, I, it's something has moved in me. And I'm like, I I just never thought that would, that was definitely not my intent, obviously doing Mm -hmm. it, but it's very, it's been very interesting for me because it's remedied my relationship with straight people men i think a lot because i mean i whereas before growing up i did not have time for that and i was just not scared of straight people but i was always made to feel like outside of their you know acceptance and so it's it's been this really awesome thing to kind of connect with them and be like i'm so proud of you for even like coming up and saying that to me because most straight people can never ever say something like that to someone you know and just admit it and it's like i don't want you i don't want you i don't need anything about Mm -hmm. anything with you, but it's been really cool to kind of witness that and see people kind of become more open or honest about how they're feeling about attraction or sexuality or whatever. Because I think at the end of the day, no one is specifically one way or the other. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, there's things that we prefer or whatever, but I just think that it's been really exciting to be in this time to, for people to kind of step into just being open and honest and, uh, inviting, not, trying to like close yourself off to opportunities or people or whatever. Um, But yeah, it's been, I hope that answered your question, but I was like, no, it's it's so so beautiful. It's been a really crazy thing. Now um, let's get back to uh, some secrets because you know, this is confess your mess. So (laughs) um, the next secret is anonymous. I'm going to come out as trans to my dad soon, Mm -hmm. even though I'm not supposed to, but I love they put the smiley face because this is a confession, but also this isn't something where you need to be sad because they say I'm, I'm going to come out as trans to my dad soon even though I'm not supposed to smiley face like this is I'm excited for this mm-hmm. I know that this isn't what my father wants mm-hmm. but I'm doing what's best for me and I think that's kind of exactly what you're just saying Jake where tomorrow's not promised mm-hmm. so if you continue to live your life for others and, and worry about what others are going to think or what others are going to say you're not living a fulfilled life and I think that's why someone like you inspires us is because you really do just live your life and you're making people smile, but you're also doing what makes you happy and what makes you smile. You're in a relationship where your partner encourages you and, and embraces exactly who you are and not try to force you into a box. And, and knows how to do spreadsheets. <laughs> so that's also very, very helpful. Very helpful. Um, but no, I think that I, I hate that that's even has to be like a secret or something, you know, like saying that it's, it's tough because I, I'm, as, as a trans person, the idea that you, what, what you have to do in terms of coming out to someone is so tough because it's already hard enough to like come out as gay or whatever and then try to, you know, I feel like right now, especially it's like trans people have to prove that they are, that's who they are. And it's like, that's so sad to me that mm-hmm. that's actually what it is. Like, that's really disappointing, but it's also exciting because there are people that are coming out and saying those things and saying, you know, I'm not supposed to be this, but I'm doing it. And I think that's, I think it's very exciting to witness all that because I think all of us have, you know, seen the way that trans people have been portrayed in media and TV shows, like all through our growing up, it's always like this tragic thing where it's like the, Mm. you know, the sex worker that was killed, like all this stuff that like, I mean, that, that stuff really embeds in your head where you're like, oh, there's not really a future or a bright future for me if I'm just come out as who I am. And so it's really exciting to be in this time to see that. And I'm, I'm very proud of this person for doing it. And I'm glad they have that little cheeky smile at the end, because I think that's exciting. And it's like to take, to take 
your life in your hands and say, this is who I am. And then to also have to worry about, am I going to be literally wiped away from this earth because of who I am? I can't even imagine the pressure or the fear in that. But I, I think it's important to do it, but also to be careful too, because you yeah. need to make sure you're safe. And I think that that's a, a big, big deterrent from people coming out or, you know, accepting who they are officially. It's that scary life or death situation, which is insane that as a human, you have to even worry about that at all. Um, so we have so many more confessions to get to, uh, but you I, have one. I you're do just, have one. You're just dying. You want to tell Jake. You want to tell Jake, I think. You want to tell Jake more than anything. Well, no, not necessarily. It's okay. not like a, it's not a confession that's like a good confession. You want to be a dancer. Oh. No, it's embarrassing. It's a very oh, okay. embarrassing confession. <laughs> okay. So, um, it's kind of in the vein of the first secret. Uh, I was basically, I was on some medication. I started like this new medication and they said that there may be some side effects. And I was like, okay, cool. Normally with medications, I don't get any side effects, right? Now, when Wait, I... Do I know the secret? Yes, you do. Because okay. I text you. When I go to the gym, Jake, I don't know if you're the same way. When I go to the gym and I take my pre-workout, usually within 30 <laughs> minutes I have to use the restroom, right? And go number two is what I'm talking about. That's just how yes. my body works. That's normal. What's not normal is I didn't understand why my stomach was like doing backflips at the red light turning into uh, the parking garage for the gym. And I was like, fine, like normally I can hold it. So, you know, I'm, I'm going into the gym and I put my stuff in my locker. Like, it's a process. I have my take things out, my drinks and everything, my he workout brings, gloves. He brings a lot to the gym. My hyper rice gun. Like, it's a lot. So I'm getting everything ready. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, no. Oh, oh no. Like, I, I don't think I can hold it. So I've never experienced this before in my life. And this is a little gross. So sorry. It gets a little graphic. As I'm pulling my pants now, no, my body no, did not wait. No. And it just started coming out as <sighs> I'm like, as I'm squatting down. And there was a moment where I looked down. I was like, did any get on my shorts? Because I, I definitely think a little bit got on my uh, calf. So <laughs> I'm like, wait, look, on your leg? Oh, on I my do leg. remember yes. this. Thank God there's nothing on my shorts. I was able to just wash it off, but I was fully prepared to text AJ and say, or call him, I need you to come to the gym and bring me a change of clothes because you're gonna sit in the stall I was going to sit there, shower, <laughs> and then change into those clothes, and then go do my workout. So that's my, that's my gym confession. Um, I mean, that's when, once you've like, once you've sh your pants in real life, like, it doesn't get much worse than that. So it's like anything else. Come on. Like, right. <laughs> like you can take on the world. I had a great workout after I was fully cleaned out. Light as a feather. Light as a feather. <laughs> <laughs> What's our next confession? Okay. Oh, I'll read this one. What? We have a deal that whenever it's a really, really long one, I read it because this one takes forever. We did it on the last episode. That's not a deal. You don't, it's not standard for every single episode. You're go keep, off. You're going to keep interrupting me? Go ahead. Sis? Read that. Read the secret. Here goes. This is from Anonymous Male, California. Again, could be our neighbor, our cousin, our family, our friend. We know three men. Okay. <laughs> One time before gym class, I'd eaten bean and cheese burritos from the cafeteria. That's that was your a first mistake. mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely had a few too many. I'm lactose intolerant, so cheese is bad and beans are also an enemy of my tummy. They're an enemy of everybody's right. tummy. I had some indigestion, but mm -hmm. thought I'd be fine. To warm up, we had to do crunches. I did one crunch, felt my tummy rumble. I did one more and knew I was going to fart, <laughs> but thought it would be silent. Oh, no. On crunch three, I fully pooped my pants <gasps> and was too embarrassed to say anything. So I went a good five minutes before excusing myself. So embarrassing. I haven't done crunches since. Stop it. Stop uh, it. His pants in a workout class. Oh, no. Well, well I mean, uh, wear a diaper. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, no, I Jake. Mean, okay. That's crazy. I, I know you used to used to do like train group mm -hmm. classes. So did you ever when you were training like that smells like a rise every mm -hmm. now and then? Because, you know, people are always releasing silent yeah, creepers and, and i low be low key be like blowing it up at barry's boot camp so i want to know if the instructor actually knows it's going down so from your I perspective mean, did you know I definitely i've definitely smelt a few things in my day a uh, time or two but i try not to, i mean i try not to like i think of it as like a, a compliment it's like you know they don't have time to go so it's like you gotta do it right here you know what i mean like i give you no time just do it so you're making them do I'm crunches like, and squats and they're really yeah, working I'm those like, abs and sometimes it happens like it just happens. And also it's not good in it's better out. So let it out. 
That is true. That's what my grandma used to say. <laughs> next confession. Well, let's go to the next confession. This one is anonymous Minnesota, eh? Okay. Oh. Don't they do that in Minnesota? That was so judgy. Minnesota, eh? And I accurate. Think, I think that's Canadian, but... <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, they're like close to each other. It's like the whole region, I think. Okay. I'm struggling with my weight slash happiness, girl. Or it's Same. anonymous, so we don't know. So, Same. Okay. Girl is a, a it, girl is also not yes. a girl. It's a figure but shift, yeah. I work long hours and have zero time to go to the gym. Can relate. Do y'all have any exercise tips for folks who have very little time for self care? Not really a secret, I guess, but we really appreciate the advice. Ooh, Jake, I feel like you should take this Ooh, away. You got this one. I mean, I, I get this. I get this a lot. People are like, I just don't have the time. I'm like, did you have time to do certain other things? Yes, you did. So it means you do have some time. You got to make it. So I think that for a lot of people, I'm like, I know getting up early sucks. Like it's awful. But sometimes you just got to like carve out these times of the day, even if it's 20 minutes, 15 minutes, who cares? It's just good for your mental health to kind of like let go, do your little thing and then leave. And so I try to say, like, did you have time to go to Target? Did you have time to go to get gas? Did you have time to go get coffee? Like, whatever. I'm like, some of those times you could maybe cut them and go to the gym or a class or something like that. And also, there's a million videos on YouTube, like, that are free, free for people. I mean, including mine, which are on Pop Sugar Fitness, but not to plug my own self. <laughs> okay, but, you know, plug. Do it. No, I don't get a cut of the money of any of that, so... You know, do what you will. But I think that there is time for everybody. I mean, if you make time to watch, you know, trash TV like I do, you have time to maybe like do workouts. It's just, a, it's just, a, I think it's a mind, it's like a mind over matter kind of thing. Yeah. I, Get up earlier. Yeah. I, I think for, <laughs> for both of us, you know, it's just all about what is your priority. And granted, for me right now, my, now that I'm freelance, but even, no, 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 because even when I had a full time job, I was still making it a priority in my life, um, but it's all about time management and what's important to you. And for me, um, going to the gym, in addition to, you know, seeing the sights of the gym, it is uh, mental <sighs> health. And I go there for my mental health because um, the times where I do get depressed or I feel down or whatever it may mm. be, going to the gym and working out, it gives me uh, this boost, this joy. And it can be a, sh a quick workout like today or it can be a longer workout. But just getting there and doing it, I feel accomplished and I feel good. The thing is, it's like people, we're all doing the best we can. And like sometimes our best is minimal. Sometimes it's over the top crazy. I'm like, do what you can do. Like, that's it. And, and don't. Yeah yourself don't judge yourself for any of that period it's so real i mean early pandemic i i lived off of cheez it's and cheez -Its red wine, wine for he a while. was talking about these damn cheez it's I and did. red wine it and was I, like I, a week it was like a month or two and then i gained a little bit of weight and then i went through a phase where i worked out really hard and i lost a bunch of weight mm -hmm. and then i recently went through a phase where i had a, i traveled a lot and i had a couple little weird like neck and back injuries and i gained weight again and i was like you know what i'm okay with that for a while and I sat with that for a few months and I was like, I'm just going to hang out and be like this. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in a phase where I'm working out really hard again and I'm losing weight again because it's what I want to do right now. Yeah. So if you want to work out and if you want to lose the weight, make time. And yeah. if you're if you're still sort of 50 50, maybe just cut yourself some slack and just love your body for a little bit as it is. Yes. And then get back to it and you get motivated again. Yes. Yeah. I think I think collectively got listen that was listen, great advice. we all had great advice for somebody there listen some, somebody somebody <laughs> is, is listening and they're like wow i i'm just i feel seen i'm i'm renewed i'm restored okay this is the <laughs> last confession before we get to jake's confession okay this is from anonymous uh -huh. just anonymous uh-huh I'm a private yoga instructor slash masseuse, Ooh. but for high paying customers, I provide happy endings. I feel no personal shame, but I'm afraid if I tell my friends, they won't respect me anymore. Okay, I'll chime in. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need to tell your friends. Just mm -hmm. th th that's none of your friends' business if they're high paying customers and you're, you're making that bread. Cause how much do you think a happy ending cost? Ah. What is high paying? I don't know. I've been close to a few happy endings. I always get confused because I'm like, is this going to happen right now? Like, ah. is this is this a thing right now? Am I supposed to <laughs> am I supposed to stop this or not? Um, but yeah, do do you? When I was in Portugal this summer, I was in Portugal and Spain, and literally they have uh, tantric massage parlors everywhere, mm -hmm. like next to like a, a Starbucks. 
and they're just and they see that's like a public so this is but yeah. this is something where because that's that's like publicly advertised well, you know what i'm but my point is though it's it's accepted there and it's mm-hmm. this person's doing it privately because it's not accepted culturally here mm. you know what i mean because americans are very very like stringent and very like just uh sort of in the the stone ages when it comes to sexual, sexual also, sexuality sometimes i feel like a tantric massage like there's an art to that that's very different than a happy ending. The happy ending is just a stroke and get off yeah. a tantric well, massage is very I, different than I a happy ending. I would say that I'm like, if you're going to be giving a happy ending, I feel like you got to really, really, really know what you're doing, not just like this one, two stroke, you're done. You know, so <laughs> I think I th- I think this person, I'm like, go off. If these people aren't paying your bills, like right, people, your, your friends aren't paying your bills, so it's like, uh, you know, you have no say in what what I do. And also, mm-hmm. this person, you're not killing anybody, you're not hurting anybody, you're trying to give pleasure and get money go off right yeah. you're making people, joy you're making people smile also not even not even this is necessarily even sex work it's like on the verge of sex work but mm-hmm. sex work is the oldest profession known to man mm-hmm. so like Literally. let's just all calm down a little bit right and let's be a little more open and honest about some things and I let's was, all get happy in oh go ahead. no no I, okay so <laughs> real story emil and i were down because the other stories are fake yeah emil and i were down in puerto Vallarta, <laughs> uh about a year or so ago maybe oh, we yeah. weren't the problematic gays that were partying we were like they're like just like hanging out right but we did oh, okay. go to um, a massage parlor and got a couple's massage. And it was two men. And it was in like Zona Romantica, which is like the gay area part of Vallarta. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're gay and you've been there, you know exactly what we're talking about. And so they were great massages. And then we also booked uh, additional treatments beyond that. My massage was okay. <clears throat> Mine was great. Luis was <laughs> wonderful. Um, and then you had something else done, like a plaza or like a smack you with those twigs or you did one of those sorts of things. I don't know what they were doing. It was just a lot of water. And yeah. And then I had a full body scrub, which I've had before, but for those you're completely naked and they're scrubbing all the crevices. It's incredible. Your skin feels amazing. Which, Cause I want to point out our massage, whatever the treatment that we got was, it was very similar. My masseuse who also did my treatment put a little towel over my private area. Mine did not. AJ apparently was just exposed. At all. They wanted and there was a lot thing. of oil involved and a lot of just a- around that region um, and a lot of brushing up against it. And I was like, and I was fully aroused. Like I was, uh, what am I going to do? I was really, and the whole time I'm also at the same time super nervous for a multitude of reasons. One, I've always been really curious. I've always been like, mm-hmm. I would kind of like to get a happy ending at some point in my life. Just okay, because of the taboo ness, you know, of it all. And also, I'm like thinking, is this happening to a meal right now? Is this going down in the it other room? It certainly was not. And then also, I'm like, <laughs> if it is, I don't want to walk in there and interrupt anything because I want him to enjoy himself. Mm-hmm. And we'll discuss this later. Thanks for thinking um, of me. Right? <laughs> and if it's not, I'm afraid that it's going to happen to me and not to him. And then I'm going to feel weird about that. So I'm like thinking like running scenarios through my mind mm-hmm. the entire time. Like. Okay, if he touches me there, do I need to say, excuse me, I need to go talk to my my boyfriend, I think, at the time. Mm-hmm. I need to go talk to him, make sure this is okay. <laughs> or can you run next door and ask him? Because I didn't want to get in trouble. Right. Not it never happened. Not the first thing to do and go ask, can I touch your boyfriend's penis? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said no. Like, um, like just and then I would have been like, other, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I would have like, hands off. Or, or I would be like, listen, what we're going to do is... I want you to, uh, I'm going to get dressed really fast. I want you to go back and, and put a, a blindfold on and him. it's going to be you. And then I know. say, he gave me permission. And then all of a sudden, I finish the mm-hmm. oil, whatever you had done. And then you open the blindfold, take it off. And you're like, oh, it's you. Ew, I would never. Jake, you're about to confess some uh, something to us. And we have no clue what it is. So yeah, I'm curious. Go ahead and AJ, do the, do the thing. Oh, it's time to. Confess your mess. Okay. So this is something I've never really, I mean, a, a few of my friends know from New York. So I lived in New York City uh, 11 years ago, which is so crazy. Um, and I was dancing with this contemporary dance company. Um, I wasn't, I hope they never hear this, but I wasn't like super crazy about the work, but I was also like just wanting to do it, you know? And um, there was this show we were doing at like an aquarium or something. I can't even remember, but it was, <laughs> I went to the rehearsal, one rehearsal, and I was like, this is terrible. I don't want to waste my time. So <laughs> this is so bad. It's not that bad, but whatever. Um, I made up that I <laughs> I lied and said I booked a Coke commercial, and I was filming it in upstate New York, literally a very detailed lie. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and 
it just so happened that it was shooting the week of the show. So I was like, I can't do it. I'm going to upstate New York. Cut to, I went to this dance class. I went to this restaurant in New York City and one of the girls was in the dance company was one was the our server. She was like, oh my God, how did that Coke commercial go? The friend that I was with didn't realize that. And she was like, oh my God, I didn't know you had a Coke commercial. I was like, yeah, it is. So I had to fully hold up this lie. <laughs> the girl walks away from the table. I told my friend, I'm like, it's a, fu- it's a fucking lie. And she was like, you were, she was like, you sold that. And I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't go down like that. Like I have to, if I'm going to commit to it, I'm going to commit to it. Um, <laughs> Fully, fully, fully lied. Oh my god! <laughs> to this day, have you ever worked at that dance company again, or have you ever booked a Coke commercial? Uh, neither. And I wish <sighs> the latter was true. So, so maybe your lie wasn't as good as you thought. Maybe they knew. I mean, well, I mean, I stopped. I st- I chose to stop dancing with them to begin with. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but they probably the knew show. I was lying. They probably knew. But here's the thing: I I can lie. It's just when you start lying, especially like that, and there's there's because you went into mm-hmm. details. Mm-hmm. I just get nervous that I'm going to like say something wrong or like all of a sudden I'm going to get caught in the lie. And then I just end up confessing the truth. Well, the key to a good lie is keeping it very simple. Mm-hmm. So you can remember yes. all of the points mm-hmm. and yes. there's a l- kind of gray, right? Like so that people can't really question too much. You don't give them too many details because I feel like once you start giving too many details, they're like, wow, they've really thought this one. That out. Part. And also, if you're going to lie, look somebody in the face. Don't be looking to the left or right because that's whenever people are like, oh, they're thinking like they know what they're So he's like, you just got to look at them and say. This is the line I'm telling you. Mm. What's that song? I looked over to the left. Oh, There's oh, is that Twitch? Ooh, there goes my shirt. I'm rest on Tweet. Oh, my head. Twitch. Tweet. That was Tweet. That was Tweet. <laughs> that was tweet. Also, isn't it crazy that, that her name was Tweet and now there's Twitter and it's called a Tweet, but that was way before Whoa. that was a whole thing. Think mind, about that. Mind blown. Does she get any profit from Twitter? No, being tweet, no. You know? All right. Um, well, first of all, that was amazing. I feel like iconic. I feel like we did have a little bit of therapy. I feel like we had some great secrets and confessions, and there was a lot more diarrhea in this episode than I expected. I, yeah, I'm a lot sure, of a lot of pooping. I don't talk about that kind of stuff. So, I'm, but I'm happy to talk with y'all. It's <laughs> very very informative. Um, so Jake, every single episode, we like to ask our amazing guest, mm. "What is your takeaway of the day from today's?" episode um the takeaway from today for this episode is probably farting is natural um <laughs> let it go be blessed <laughs> <laughs> not be blessed <laughs> love it. i love it i love it thank you so much for joining us yeah uh, jake you're incredible we had um, a blast we have to go see a show yes message aj yeah definitely <laughs> message me because i reached out to you to do this podcast because in full transparency, Jake really saved us because our guest had to reschedule for another week last minute. There are some issues going on, and I did not know that Jake wanted to hang out with us mm-hmm. all these years. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. So when I was rolling through my phone, I was like, oh, Jake, Jake would be so dope. Okay, I'm just going to shoot my shot and say, hey, I know you're famous now, but would oh, you come okay. on our podcast? And immediately Jake was like, what time? How can I help? And I was like, oh, my God. You're incredible. So maybe you and I should have been texting all along and we'd be best friends by now. I'm just I know now. I know now. But now you I know. Mean, you just keep doing your best. You just keep doing your best. Hey, we try. Hey, we try. Be best. Maybe not trying hard be enough. Best. But <laughs> like Melania says, just be best, honey. Jake, you're incredible. And good luck with all of your future endeavors. I know you're heading over to Europe soon. Hopefully, fingers crossed on that. Keep us posted. I've never been to Paris. Uh, it would be nice to have a reason Ooh, to go. Oh, yeah. Just saying, we are getting married this next year. So, ah, just maybe a little trip. <laughs> maybe a trip. Uh, we adore you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Love Jay. You both. We have to highlight our messenger of the week. Oh, yes. If you want to be a messenger of the week, all you have to do is go to Apple Podcasts, rate, comment, subscribe, five stars, please, and give us a nice, um, beautiful rating about our show. We what really if somebody appreciate writes it. a really great review and gives us one star? Do they are they okay. still in the running? Loki, that happens. So in the comments, I can only see because we're in the United States, American comments, but there are different like podcast websites that show you all the comments you've received, and they were in like Canada or somewhere else, and they left us an amazing rating, but they left one star well in some countries it's the one opposite. star might be the best exactly so we're gonna take it <laughs> okay so today's messenger of the week is ish r zero zero 
They said this podcast is amazing. I love the content Ooh. and in all caps, the tea. The tea. Yes. Okay, ish. Confess your mess. Confess Your Mess is a Straw Hut Media podcast produced by Ryan Tillotson and Frank Driscoll. Thank you so much for listening and don't forget to subscribe and share. And if you have a secret and want to share, go to confessyourmess.us to submit. Your secret could end up in the show. Ooh.